let's review what power is. Power is 1 minus beta, where beta is the probability of type 2 error. Type 2 error is that uh, actually the null hypothesis is wrong, but you fail to reject it. So here's what we are looking at. Uh, th this really says that our random variable follows the normal distribution with 3 and 4 squared. And if we have n equals to 100, then the, the average of 100 of these x's, which we call x bar, is going to follow the normal distribution with the same mean value. But what happens to the variance? Variance goes down, right? By how much? One square root of one. It's, uh, yeah, so by 100. And uh, eventually, this means that the standard deviation uh, becomes forward. Right? OK. So that our z would be uh, x bar minus the mu. I'll just put c here to say that it's mu claimed. Okay. Claimed. When you do the test statistic for hypothesis testing, you're going to do uh, x bar minus the claimed mu divided by the standard deviation, right? So it will be uh, 4 over 10. And the critical value would be, this is a two-tailed test, so it's like, uh, 1.96 here, 1.96. Okay. For two-tailed, uh, if you have negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, this this region right here will be 0 0.025 0 or 2.5 percent, and this will also be 0 0.025. Now, if you're wondering where I get 1.96. How do you get 1.96? Inverse norm. It's an inverse norm of 1 minus alpha over 2. Zero, zero 1. one. And the reason we do alpha over 2 is because we, we have a two-tailed test. OK? <coughs> so that's what we get. And uh, if this value falls in here or there, we reject. And we're happy. Then, then the hypothesis testing gave us a correct conclusion. Right? But if the value becomes in here, then we're not happy because uh, that means uh, the hypothesis testing fails to reject the null. Okay? So let's think about exactly what values x bar is going to follow. Okay? So this means that. Uh, since this is 0 and this is 0 0.4, we have x bar over z minus 0 over 0 0.4 equals to 1.96. Okay, if, if it's less or equal to 1.96, or this is bigger or equal to negative 1.96, then uh, you can't reject the null and uh, you end up with a type 2 error. Okay? So you have x bar equal to 0 0.4 times 1.96, which is, uh, 7.84? No, 0.784. Oh, yeah. 0 0.784. Okay, good. Okay. And, uh, so, so this 1.96 corresponds to 0 0.784, uh, and, uh, Negative 1.96 value of z corresponds to x bar being negative, which is negative 0.74. So 
which means that if x bar is between 0 0.784 and negative 0 0.784, then we have type 2 error. Is this OK so far? Yeah, it's, this is a bit challenging to think because you're, you're not trying to reject the null. You're really thinking about when does it fail to reject the null. It fails when your test statistic belongs between here to there. And you have to calculate the values that correspond to these two values. And if x bar belongs to these between these two, then yes. So what if it fell between like the 0.784 and the 1.96? Point point what, what? Like what if it fell between that value on the right, the 0.784, uh -huh. and the 1.96? Like would that mean that what, it was 1.96 like is the value for z. <coughs> this is the value. See, z and x bar have, has this relationship. If x bar becomes bigger than this, then z test statistic will be bigger than 1.96, oh, okay. and you, you're going to be able to reject the null. Yeah, I see it now. All right, okay. All right, so now we want to know what's the probability that this can help happen. Okay? But that means we have to go back and look at this one, okay? And see, since, since x bar follows this normal distribution, we have to calculate the probability of this happening. Okay, so beta is a probability of type 2 error. So beta is, uh, is the probability that x bar would be between negative uh, 0.784. And because we have the calculator to help help with that, this, we can just say uh, norm CDF. Just put the two endpoints as negative 0 0.784, positive 0 0.784. Okay. Average is three. Okay. And then the standard deviation is this is four over ten squared. Okay. So this is like 0 0.4. So you have this. Can you tell me what value you get? You should get this very small value. Yeah, 1.52 times 10 to the negative 8. 1.52 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay. So it says e negative 8. Yes. Is it 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 squared? Oh, yeah, it's 0.4 squared, but then when you pl plug into the calculator, you should be plugging in the standard deviation, not the variance. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you for asking me that. Yeah. So I, I meant to say this, and then this is what you plug in. Okay, so now you just do 1 minus this value, at, at just, just uh, do 1 minus an answer in your calculator. That gives you your power. What's your power? Point nine 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 nine. Nine ninety nine nine nine. Yeah, it's just nines basically. Yeah. So you, and then eight four eight at the end. How many nines after uh, that? Five. Five. And then eight four eight. Eight four eight. Okay. So that's what it is. So this is like. Definitely. Right. What, what this means is that if the standard deviation is 4 and the actual average is 3, which is far off from 0, right? then if you do a testing with 100 samples, there's no way you're going to not fail to reject the null. Okay? You, you'll never get the type 2 error. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> You have a question? Yes. Um, what happened with the 1.52 times 10 to the negative 8? Uh, so so uh, this is your beta value, right? <coughs> Once you get the beta value, you get the power as 1 yeah. minus beta. So you, you do 1 minus your answer. Then, sorry, can you say the 0.4 squared again, but that is used for? 
zero point four squared. Oh, here. Yes, please. So uh, we know that the variance of x bar is the variance divided by the sample size n, right? The variance goes down, right? So that's why I, I, I went from 4 squared to 4 squared over 100. OK? But then this is same as 0 0.4 squared. And the relationship between standard deviation and variance, what is that? Variance is standard deviation squared. So what's in here is the standard deviation. Now, if you look at the, if you have a TI-84 that asks you for individual values, it's going to say left, right, and then mean, and standard deviation. Those are the questions that it's going to ask. So what you should be plugging in here should be standard deviation, not variance. So if you put, put this by itself in here, you get the wrong answer. You, you have to convert it like this. Yes? Uh, the power value, that's a percentage. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's like 99.9999948% uh, correct. So, it, uh, like, it, it's going to avoid the type 2 error, for sure. Any other questions? <laughs>